How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Elvis Junction Reviews. Today, we are looking at two products today. Our first product is our is a Walther's Proto Gunderson Rebuilt AP 53-foot well car for TTX number 475474. And this is in the red TTX uh, scheme right here. As you can see, in this lovely Walther's Proto box. And because this is a well car that carries containers, well, we need containers, and I bought some. I bought some Walther, oh, sorry, Atlas H-O-C-M-I-C 53 foot containers and as you can see they are for hub group here so we have two products today we're going to move the containers out to the side because we will get to them later our first priority is this well car so I'm going to go ahead and get it open here let's get it out of the box here move that box off to the side and underneath our well car's plastic container we have our instruction manual which also comes with a pop-up diagram as well as some history which we will get into in a minute once we get the well car out of its uh packaging here let's take that plastic bit off here here it comes move this off to the side we have a clear plastic sheet protecting the model from dust and such move that over here and as you can see we have truck stabilizers on the bottom so we're just going to go ahead and pull these suckers off all right all right so now that we have got the our car out of the package let's get into some get into some history and now on to some history as more containers began moving by train in the late 1970s shippers began looking for an alternate alternative to traditional 89 foot flat cars with train lengths increasing, so did damage from slack action, and while containers could be easily stacked aboard ships to increase efficiency and revenue, standard flat cars could only carry a single level of containers. By the early 1980s, the first five-unit double-stack articulated well cars were in service. Their deeper trough-style bodies offered a lower center of gravity and increased overhead clearance so containers could be stacked too high. To move worldwide shipping companies had long standardized on 20 foot for heavier loads or 40 foot containers for lighter loading and these first generation cars were built with 40 foot wells initially traffic moved coast to coast between major shipping terminals but the use of containers for domestic service also began catching on about the same time regulations were relaxed to permit 45 foot and shortly after 48 foot highway trailers created a soup creating a market for containers of the same size and longer well cars, along with three unit and standalone cars for domestic shipments between smaller terminals. Although the 48 foot well became a standard in the 1990s, 45 and 48 foot containers became obsolete with the arrival of the 53 foot domestic containers. Since the majority of containers were the usual 20 and 40 foot types, the wasted car space meant extra weight, extra fuel consumption, and extra length that adversely impacted operations, while longer containers could just be could just as easily be carried on top of smaller ones. Structurally sound and years from retirement, the now surplus 48-foot cars provided the basis for a rebuilding program launched in the late 2000s, resulting in two sizes of rebuilt well cars. The cars were cut apart and a section removed for the 40-foot versions, while the 53-foot cars had new sections welded in place at either end. With fresh paint and revised lettering, many are now in service all across the U.S. And that is what we have here today, one of those rebuilt 53 foot well cars all right so now that we've gone over some history we're going to get into some details starting with the a and the b end of the car so before we actually get into the detail you're probably wondering what is an a and a b end of a freight car it is simple a there's nothing there b means for brake wheel it means that the brake wheel is on that side a and b and uh even though this is a walters proto it's a well car there's not a lot of detail going on here but we have some like this brake wheel, for instance. We have our Walther's metal coupler right here, along with the... Uh, it looks like an air hose, but it's actually for magnetic decoupling, uh, if you want to be a little more realistic, instead of having to use the hand of God or a metal, I mean, a wooden dowel to un uh, unlock your well cars, or just your freight cars in general. We have some walk... We have some grab, grab irons right here for the walkways here. And you can see the brake detail right there there's nothing really going on on the other end it's just the same thing minus that little uh besides that brake wheel all right so now let's get into some side detail all righty so looking at the side here we have a lot of legible writing here 
specifically the container lengths here. So we have 40 foot and 20 foot, 45, 40, and 53 foot uh, cars here. We have some information about the brakes, the beams, as well as the shoes, and a few more spec things right here. Moving, excuse me, moving the local, that's not a locomotive, moving the well car uh, forward. We have our, we have more legible uh, writing right here, as well as right here. And this tells you the gross weight that these contain, that these well cars can handle when it comes to the containers and their weight. We also have our reporting marks, DTTX475474, and this is a plate H well car. And actually, if you look right here, these are where the welding marks are right, right here, <clears throat> if I'm correct. I could be wrong, but if I am wrong, please let me know in the comments. But yeah, I believe these are the welding marks right here. Moving the well car along here, we have our lovely TTX logo, which is a very good looking logo. We have some more reporting marks. Here's our load limit right here, 167,900 pounds, which is a lot of weight. Moving on here, we have some more uh, details right here, as well as a big 53 to indicate that this this freight car, the max length of containers it can carry is 53 feet. And as you can see, we have our trucks right here, as well as some more um, legible writing, as well as some sill stripes, which I'm, if I'm correct, they do not reflect light um, like the real cars do, but I could be wrong. I had to try to find out myself. But if, if, I, if I do find out, I will definitely put a little comment right now all right so now let's look at some detail on the inside so this by the way this well car is made out of actual like metal so it has a very good weight and it makes a metallic noise and also we have see-through walkways right here which is really cool well, actually you can, you can see that right now which is very nice these are where trailer hitches used to be but they removed them which i think is a shame i think they should keep them in there the, you can see this was the original section right here uh, of these holes right here as opposed to these gaps here. This is where the weld marks come in, the four extra four feet on either side, uh, as you can see right here. And you can actually see little holes. This is for your containers, and specifically these well cars, because they're made by Walther's, they like Walther's containers. Now, I would like, I should probably point out that um, there is no NMRA standards when it comes to the pegs and the holes of containers. So each company, Atlas, Walthers, Athern, Intermountain, they all have a, they all have a very slightly varying difference in the, um, peg and hole, uh, container department. So, I mean, you can still put other, com other manufacturers, well cars in, but they might not uh, have a fun time with these holes. All right. So now that we've gone over the well car, it's time to look at the containers that this well car will be carrying. All right, so now we're gonna look at these containers here. I have no idea how to actually open this. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for this part here. There are some staples there. Oh, well, that was easier than I thought. Hello. But I should also point out, I also did buy the well car and these containers from Lombard Hobbies. Are they individually wrapped? Oh, they are. Oh, that's very interesting. I did not actually know that. So they're actually individually wrapped. I thought they would, I, so there it is. They're actually a lot lighter when it's not the three of them. I'm just gonna throw that away. Good, didn't go in. <laughs> but anyway, we have our three well cars and I didn't know that. I'm actually very, I'm very impressed that they're actually wrapped individually inside the bag. I thought they'd be free floating, kind of like the Walters ones. It looks like we have one hole right there. There we go. Man, this is really fascinating. Get out of there. And finally, and I can tell this, they, Atlas really put their heart and soul into the, making these. I'm very impressed by that. So here is our 53 foot container for Hub Group. And as you can see, it's very nice looking. That is a lot of detail uh, for this. You can see the, this is so much detail on this. It says warning high cube. Tells you 24,000 pounds right here. I'm actually going to read this so I can... Let's see. We also have our reporting marks. It also indicates that there's 53 foot right there, as well as a caution and wide uh, truck uh, turning, as you can see right down in the bottom right corner. We also have the um, safety plaque right above it, that silver diamond that does... I actually have one of those um, plaques. I found it on the side of the road. 
It was horribly messed up. Like it was definitely faded and from a long time ago, but I do have it still. It's actually hanging up on my wall, but I'm not going to show you that. But anyway, as you can see, <clears throat> it looks very nice. And all of a sudden my voice has died. I do not know why. And as you can see, here it is. Does, that is a lot of detail. You can see where like the the bits have lock, have latched up. And you see that nice hub group logo there, warning high cube. Here is the back of it. You can see the reporting marks. You can see just all kinds of really amazing things. Here's the top. There's another reporting mark there, as well as right here. And actually, let's do some stacking. Why not? Come on. There we go. And... There we go. So now they are all... So now they're all stacked together. They, those are those are actually really firm. So those aren't those aren't going to come out. Let's go ahead and grab our well car here. Let's move these off to the side. Let's grab two of these well cars and let's place them inside the container. Inside the well. Come on. Don't 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 argue with me. Just do it. Seems they want to. Oh, there we go. Perfect. And so there is our well car with its 53 foot containers. And it does look very nice indeed. I'll just do a quick 360 here. This is looking very nice. Let's take that, let's take one out so you can see single stack right here. And that's it's just very nice looking. I very I do very much enjoy that. In fact, these are the first 53 containers I've actually ever purchased. I've only purchased 48, 40s, and 20s in the past. But these are just really good looking. I have to give Atlas a lot of credit, and they just did a phenomenal job with these. All right, so now let's get into my final thoughts. So I have to give both Atlas and Walthers a very good A, a, a solid A for um, not only the well car, but also the quality of these containers. The containers are really great. They look and they feel amazing. They don't feel very light. And that well car is very good in terms of the weight department, and it rolls well. So I really just, this, just two overall really good products and I'm very glad that I purchased them. I bought them from Lombard Hobbies. They're still available. You can buy these, um, both, the, both the well car and the 53 foot containers. There's still plenty available as well as on Midwest Model Rail, Rail Railroad or Railroad Hobbies. I will put links in the descriptions down below. But anyway, if you enjoyed, please hit that like button. Also subscribe if you have not. And hit the notification bell to know when I upload. I upload on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. or at least I try to. Uh, work is very busy, so I don't get, I don't really have a lot of days off to actually film and record and all that. But um, just check in on Wednesdays at 9 a.m. to see if I actually do upload, and hopefully you'll see something. So thank you very much for joining, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.